It's winter in Tennessee. In the southeastern United States, resident birds and mammals enjoy relatively mild winters, but there are several weeks of cold and even freezing temperatures and snow and ice. So why is this hummingbird feeder up in the middle of winter? Oh, that's why. Hello, I'm Graham Gerdeman, and today on Nashville Birder, we're going to talk about winter hummingbirds. Yep, winter hummingbirds are a thing, and everyone loves hummingbirds. Before we begin, if you like this content, uh, please click like and subscribe and share this video with a friend. Sharing and subscribing really helps grow my audience. So let's get started with a pop quiz. How many species of hummingbird occur in Tennessee? If you're like me, you grew up knowing there's one easy answer. One. Only one species of hummingbird lives in the eastern United States. The ruby-throated hummingbird. Right? Well, actually that's wrong. The ruby-throated hummingbird is the only hummingbird species which breeds and nests in the eastern United States. That's true. But the number of species which has been recorded in just Tennessee is up to nine. Most of these vagrant western hummingbirds don't show up in the summer when we have flowers in bloom, but in winter. The far and away most likely hummingbird in winter in the east is the rufous hummingbird. These gorgeous North American hummingbirds breed from southern Oregon and central Idaho up through Washington and British Columbia, all the way to southern Alaska. In fall, they migrate to their wintering grounds in Mexico, but also in spots along the Gulf Coast from Texas to Florida, and a few of them winter in Tennessee and other eastern states every year. They've been documented in every state on the eastern seaboard, in fact, all the way up to Maine. There are even winter records of Rufus Hummingbird in Ontario and Nova Scotia. These maps we were just looking at are courtesy of the eBird project of Cornell University's Lab of Ornithology. You can find all kinds of cool bird visualization tools at ebird.org explore. With good looks at the bird, Rufus Hummingbirds are easily distinguished from ruby-throated hummingbirds, which themselves are very rare in the winter anywhere in the United States. Depending on how the light hits it, the adult male's gorget is a brilliant scarlet and bronze, sometimes appearing greenish on both cap and throat, depending on the light, and the cheeks, back, and sides are usually solid rufous-toned. Adult females have more, mostly green backs, but they still show much more rufous coloration on the sides, flanks, rump, and tail than you would ever expect in a ruby-throated female. Adult rufous females also show a splotchy central gorget spot in the throat, which ruby-throated females don't. Okay, so our most likely wintering hummingbird doesn't really look that much like our regular summer hummingbird. But watch out, because it gets trickier from there. Broad-tailed, calliope, and Allen's hummingbirds also can occur in the east, and all these photographs were taken in Tennessee. They belong to the same genus as Rufus hummingbirds, and they can look very similar, especially in challenging lighting conditions. Adult male calliope and broad-tailed hummingbirds are easily distinguished from their Rufus cousins by distinctly colored and even patterned uh, throat gorgets. Uh, check out this adult male calliope gorget. It's amazing. This, this bird is awesome. And this bird was photographed in Nashville two years in a row. The first year, it looked like this. In fact, this is the exact same bird photographed only about 11 months earlier. We know that because it was banded by a federally licensed hummingbird bander and recaptured later. But these two species, calliope and broad-tailed, are structurally different enough that even the females and the young birds can be told from one another and from the other Salasphorus hummingbirds by an experienced observer. Okay, but Allen's hummingbird is different. Here's that Allen's hummingbird photograph I showed you earlier. Now this looks like a young male Rufus hummingbird. 
Now here it is from the back. And an Allen's hummingbird, whether it's male or female, has a mostly green back. Now remember, I said that the adult male rufous hummingbird usually has a solid rufous back. Well, if it does, then that's great. But as it turns out, a certain percentage of rufous hummingbirds are green-backed as well. So how do you know? The rufous hummingbird in a spread tail has a notch in two of the tail feathers that an Allen's hummingbird doesn't have. So to definitively tell if this bird is an Allen's or a rufous hummingbird in your yard, you either need to have a sharp, clear photograph of that spread tail or a licensed hummingbird bander needs to come and catch the bird and measure it in the hand. This is quick, it's safe for the hummingbird, and hummingbird banding has greatly expanded the knowledge that we have of status and distribution of this entire family of birds. If the bird is a juvenile, especially a juvenile female, it may be impossible to tell, even in the hand, if it is an Allen's hummingbird or a rufous hummingbird. This is a juvenile hatch year female rufous hummingbird, which was distinctive enough to be told in hand. Now, just as these birds belong to the same genus as rufous hummingbirds, black chinned hummingbirds belong to the same genus as ruby throated hummingbirds. Now, just as before, Adult male black chin hummingbirds are not an ID challenge with a striking black chin and dark purple throat. But female black chin hummingbirds, like this beautiful bird which spent the past winter in Middle Tennessee, are very similar to female ruby throated hummingbirds. If you look at the bird from the back, notice that the wings are very long and may actually appear to extend beyond the bird's tail. Now, in a ruby-throated hummingbird, and here's a young male ruby-throated hummingbird stretching a little bit, but notice how the tail is long and extends well past the wings. This is a, one of these subtle differences between these birds. And now we'll look again at the female black-chinned hummingbird to compare. And also notice that her long bill is slightly, ever so slightly, curving down. The ruby-throated hummingbird's bill tends to be more straight. And check this out. When a black chin hummingbird hovers, it pumps its tail back and forth constantly. Look at that. This one is pumping its tail even when it perches. Here's a little two-frame animation that I made, which is kind of silly, but it shows exactly what these birds do non-stop when they're hovering. So if you see a hummingbird in winter pumping its tail like this, it's at least a good hint that you might have a black-chinned hummingbird. Of course, this can be a little more difficult to determine in real time. They move pretty fast. But here's one other critical field mark. The outer wing feather on a black-chinned hummingbird is very rounded and wide, almost club-shaped, it's described. Notice on the ruby-throated hummingbird, these outer wing feathers are more pointed and narrow. This is very important. And of course, also notice the difference in the tail and wing lengths. Okay, so now we've got our regular summer ruby-throated hummingbird. In winter, possibly rufous hummingbird, calliope hummingbird, broad-tailed hummingbird, Allen's hummingbird, black-chinned hummingbird. Wow! Additional hummingbirds which have been found in Tennessee are broad-billed hummingbird, Anna's hummingbird, and Mexican violet ear. Now that spectacular Mexican hummingbird is most likely to occur here in the summer as it breeds down in Mexico during our North American winter and then disperses. But if you want to be one of the lucky ones to attract one of these winter hummingbirds to your yard, all you really need to do is leave a feeder up in winter. Of course, you need to keep the feeder clean and the nectar fresh as always. And if temperatures drop below freezing, you need to find a way to keep the nectar thawed and liquid at the bottom. Now there are commercially available heated hummingbird feeders, but you can do this yourself with many tricks like this utility light on the feeder or even these 
Christmas lights taped underneath the feeder. This provides enough heat to keep that nectar thawed. You may have also noticed the sound that the Rufus Hummingbird's wings make, which also will alert you to its presence. Male Allen's Hummingbirds also make a trill. If you live in the eastern United States and you see a hummingbird at your feeders between the dates of November 15th and March 15th, you can find a licensed hummingbird bander to help you identify that bird and with your permission, band it or read an existing band on it at southeasternavianresearch.org slash hummingbird. I'll put a link below. And if you've had a, uh, the fortune to host a winter hummingbird at your house, leave a comment and tell me about it. I would love to hear about it. I have a ton of people to thank for this episode. It's taken me a long time to produce. Um, and so also check below for those thanks in the information. That's all for today. Thanks so much for watching and thanks for your support.